Hey all So back with another spotlight video, this time on Atuma. I talked about this briefly in the video on Shuri, which you should check out next if you haven't already. But both of these characters are extremely unique, have very new and interesting abilities that their spotlights talk about really well, so I would recommend going and reading the actual spotlights with the dev notes. They're insightful. However, because the abilities are so interesting and unique, both of them have pretty extensive dev notes, and in the interest of limiting just how much text I'm throwing up on the screen, I'm going to be skipping a lot of the context stuff and just focusing on the abilities and trying to give y'all insight into exactly how I'm thinking about this and how it felt for me to play these characters and why I'm excited about them. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start with Atuma because this first part of his kit is really the core of it. So right away, all of all ability accuracy modification effects aimed at him have their potencies reversed. So plus 50% ability accuracy actually makes his kit less likely to work, and minus 100% ability accuracy actually makes him more likely to function. So your concussions, your disorients, your various nodes that mess with ability accuracy in Alliance War, including glancing nodes, are not going to stop Atuma from functioning. Now, just on the subject of glancing, Atuma is not immune to the part of glancing that keeps him from landing critical hits and lowering his damage, but abilities will not fail to trigger when he's dealing with glancing and will actually trigger twice as often at base. So this is a really interesting ability that just lets him take a whole lot of things that nobody else can on his very base level. Additionally, it means that some of the ways that we often try to mess with particularly dangerous defenders just make him nastier. If you use Archangel against this guy and start stacking up neurotoxins, he's going to get worse, not better, for you to fight. If you use Apocalypse on this guy to try and prevent a Purify, it's just going to happen anyway because it will actually have 200% ability accuracy, not zero, right? So keep that in mind for everything else. This particularly matters because of the next bullet point. Any of his abilities with a listed chance are going to get modified by all of that ability accuracy reversal, right? And when those abilities cross a 100% chance to trigger, they can actually trigger more than once. Like it says, each time the chance then drops by 100% and it runs again until the ability fails. So imagine an ability with a 50% chance to trigger, right? It's literally 50-50. It happens half the time. But now imagine that something is causing that ability to instead have a 350% chance to trigger. For anyone else in the game thus far, that just means it's basically guaranteed, right? It's over 100% chance that ability will trigger. For Atuma, it will trigger three times. Guaranteed. Because the first time it'll have a 300% chance to trigger, boom, it happens. The second time it will have a 250% chance to trigger, boom, it happens. Then 150. So guaranteed three triggers, and then there is a possibility of it happening a fourth time. There's a 50% chance of it happening a fourth time. So if an ability for a Tuma has a 350% chance to trigger, you're guaranteed three, and then you might get another. Now, important to note, if you do get that fourth one, it will actually run the calculation a fifth time, but you'll have a less than 0% chance, it'll now be down to negative 50% of the ability triggering that fifth time, so it won't trigger, and that counts as it failing due to ability accuracy, or yeah, failing due to low ability accuracy. So if you're facing somebody like Domino, even if you have an ability that is guaranteed to trigger multiple times, that calculation will run until it does fail, meaning that literally everything he does triggers crit failure against her. Would not recommend. 
but it's a really cool ability that allows a lot of his stuff to scale really well. And it basically turns Atuma into a freight train. That's kind of the core metaphor I want you to keep in mind for his kit. He takes a while to get rolling, but it gets pretty nuts once he's on his way. So next up, he has a 15% chance to deal physical thorns damage when struck with a contact attack. So if you're not messing with his ability accuracy at all, this is only going to happen roughly every seventh time, right? And it's a significant amount of damage, right? Like, you will feel that, but it's not that bad. This isn't, like, Sig 200 Korg level. It's just, like, every seventh time, he'll hit you a little bit. But you can only get around it with a non-contact attack. Energy hits will still trigger this. I'm saying this because I know that there is still often a misconception in some parts of the community that energy attacks are not contact attacks. Those are two separate axes. I have videos about that, but I think that's all I'll say for now. Like it says, damage scales with base attack only, so you don't have to worry about this being dramatically worse in Incursions or Alliance War. Um, additionally, when an opponent evades a Tuma, as long as he's below a bar of power, he gains some of his power and goes unstoppable. Now, this is a nice little offensive trick. Defensively, it means he's dangerous to fight with evaders. It also means that he basically cannot be quaked. Because remember that this has a 100% chance to trigger. If you use Quake on him and you try and land a concussion, it will actually trigger twice. <laughs> and it will trigger every time you try to do this, every try time you try to evade him, until he eventually gets a bar of power. And then everything about Quake kind of shuts down. It's a fun little counter from a skill champion. I'm a big fan of it. It's also very nice for him offensively. It's kind of a built-in unfazed mastery. Be careful. Now, this next part, his base regen rate is 25%. This looks like a huge negative at first, because that's only half of what Kingpin has. It's less even than what Daredevil has. That's awful, right? Except that it is going to come up later. So don't react too strongly to that yet. Additionally, while he is not immune to ability or to regenerate modification, it cannot be lowered below this 25%. So you're not going to be able to reverse his regeneration. You're not going to be able to use Petrify or Spectre or anything like that to turn his regen around. And no matter how many poisons or debuffs with the Despair Mastery you stack on him, this is its floor. It is not going to drop further. So, next big part of his kit is Hydration. Like it says, this comes from his special attacks, and each stack of Hydration is a passive that falls off one at a time every seven seconds. So, I talk about this in the Shuri Spotlight as well, I want to touch on it again here. Falling off one at a time means that if you have, say, ten stacks of something, and it's listed as lasting seven seconds, then at the end of seven seconds, you have nine stacks, but they're starting from seven again. At the end of seven seconds after that, you'll have eight stacks, right? So what that means is that each stack of hydration lasts seven seconds, but if you have a lot of hydration, you are going to have some hydration for a lot longer than seven seconds. So you just kind of have to adjust how you read that. It's not the same as like, gaining a bunch of seven second armor ups on a normal character. So for every stack of hydration, he gets a flat amount of attack rating and his regen rate goes up, meaning that when you're at 20 stacks of hydration, his regen rate is actually pretty respectable, especially as we will get to yet uh, later on, because he pretty much always has a debuff on him and therefore is going to benefit a lot from willpower. Additionally, this attack rating is really solid um, because, as you can see here, this is again on a 5-star, that's how they normally do this, but 20 stacks of that is over 3,000 extra attack on a 5-star. That's really serious. Once you get to 10 stacks, Atuma becomes immune to Incinerate and gets this Precision passive. 
it's a pretty chunky precision passive. He's not going to crit quite as often as somebody like Elsa, but you really start seeing uh, yellow numbers fly once you get up here. And then at 19, he becomes unstoppable. So that's at 19 or higher, right? Just uh, reminding that, which means that if Atuma jumps up to 20 stacks of hydration, he will effectively be unstoppable for 14 seconds because you're going to have to have two stacks of hydration fall off before he drops back below 19. So this is a powerful offensive tool if you're maintaining hydration. It's also possibly the single scariest part of his defensive kit is that if you do not control hydration in some way and you are not killing Atuma quickly, if this eventually comes online it is extremely difficult to deal with. So just watch out for that. Now, this next uh, bullet point here gives us some hope. When you inflict him or try to inflict him with incinerate or shock, he's going to lose a stack of hydration and it falls off faster when you put cold snap on him. So any of those temperature related uh, energy dots are gonna be really helpful. I tried sunspot uh, on him early on. That works quite well. He can nuke him down extremely quickly. Strife is also very fun for Atuma because in addition to his thorns counter, remember earlier, every time that you reapply that shock with his mediums or heavies, it counts as a new shock, and so he's very good at controlling hydration. Just watch for those kinds of abilities when you are dealing with Atuma. They really make everything else much easier. Now, the core of his kit from a function standpoint really is his heavy attack, to the point where, as the spotlight says, if he has trouble landing heavy attacks, the kit kind of falls apart. Now, his heavy is a single hit and has really solid reach and launches quickly, so if you need to heavy counter, you can take stun immune nodes with him, but you are always going to need to go into a fight thinking about how do I land my heavies safely and reliably. And that's because... The heavy is going to give you concussions. Now, if you have non-damaging debuffs, then these can fuel your concussions. If you don't have any non-damaging debuffs, then it starts to eat your hydrations instead. So if you're facing a node that is putting a bunch of non-damaging debuffs, other than concussions, on yourself, then you can keep your hydration up for all of those benefits and be giving yourself a bunch of concussions, and therefore any fight like that, all of the ones that Kingpin tends to like to take, are really, really good. But he still functions just fine, even if all you have is hydration to fuel this, because you really want those concussions. Because remember, concussions reduce ability accuracy for most champions, meaning that they actually increase it for a Tuma. Now, the way ability accuracy works with something like a concussion is that it is a multiplicative um, reduction or increase, meaning that if you have, let's say, a 20% chance for someone to evade, or, you know what, let's take the 15% chance that a Tuma has to inflict thorns. If you put a 50% concussion on him, then that is going to be a 50% increase to his chance to trigger. So a 50% increase to the 15, meaning that it's now a 22.5% chance. Not that that 15 jumps all the way to 65. So the way to keep track of this is look at Atuma's ability accuracy, figure out what it should be as a multiplier, and then apply that to the chance for something to trigger. If he has 300% um, ability accuracy because he has four concussions on him, then all of the numbers in his kit that are telling you that something can happen can be multiplied by three. So the 100% chance to purify and gain additional concussions becomes a 300% chance. The 15% chance for him to apply thorns becomes a 45% chance, and so on. I realize that there's a lot of math in here, and it's it's easy to uh, feel intimidated by this, but you can kind of go two ways here. One, we just went over how the math works, and so you can break it down and get exact numbers if you would like to really understand all of that. 
But the flip side of it is that, in my opinion, you don't need to understand the flip side of all of that because everything really kind of comes down to putting concussions on Atuma is really good for him. And when he has a lot of concussions on him, everything he does can happen multiple times. If you understand those two truths, he's really not that complicated to play. But I'm going over the specifics of the math just in case because it can help if you're trying to figure out why something happened a little bit differently than you were expecting. Now note this Purify from the Heavy Attack also triggers when he is stunned or infuriated. So obviously the Infuriate is a little bit of a ha-ha, go-away Herc button, but the stun also means that this happens if you parry him. And... <laughs> This is how he gets out of control on defense. Because you parry him, he purifies the stun, which is a non-damaging debuff, gains a concussion, and then maybe the next time he throws a special attack, now he has hydration present as well, and a couple concussions, because you parried him a couple times, you parry him again, and not only does he purify the stun, he also converts a few of the hydration stacks, and boom, now he has like five or six concussions, and then the next time you hit him, you're basically guaranteed to be hit with the thorns. It spirals quickly if you let it, so have a plan for how you're going to get your openings and try not to trigger his concussions. That's how things go south. Okay, so the special one gives you a 100% chance to gain hydration. This means that, you know, as with anything else, if you have a cup if you have two concussions on you, that becomes a 200% chance to gain three stacks of hydration and therefore six stacks of hydration. If it's not an even multiple, then it just runs several times, right? So if that's a 150% chance, you could gain three, you could gain six, but you're guaranteed the three. You get the hang of this math pretty quickly if you just run it a few times for specific abilities. That's my recommendation if this is confusing you. Additionally, you're going to get this true accuracy passive, and these passives also last seven seconds and fall off one at a time. So even when you have no concussions on yourself, when your ability accuracy is normal, this does have a 20% chance, because that's the bit over 100, to give you two of these passives. So this special one has roughly an 80% chance to give you seven seconds of true accuracy and a 20% chance to give you 14 seconds of true accuracy. And then, as with anything else, it scales up from there as your ability accuracy rises. This is obviously a pretty powerful source of true accuracy. If you are fighting an evader or an auto blocker, you can pretty much just spam this. Especially when you combine this with the early ability that if somebody evades you, you gain power. And go unstoppable to make sure you don't get wrecked. He's a really strong evade counter. So excellent for those pesky spiders. For the special two, uh, this one has a 200% chance to gain two stacks of hydration. Remember what I said about ability accuracy. A single 50% concussion takes this 200% up to 300%, meaning that you would gain two stacks of hydration three times or six total. So that means that the special two scales better with concussions because it starts at a higher listed chance. Again, if this is sounding like a lot, I would recommend reading through the actual printed spotlight because the designer for Atuma did really good dev notes on this. I'm trying to explain it while also moving through and I realize that that is a bit of a challenge. So moving on to this next bit, each hit does have a 50% chance to grant a cruelty passive these are fairly small, but they're decently long, and once Atuma gets rolling, because there are four hits in his special two, and this 50% chance can easily get over 100%, you can stack a lot of cruelties once he gets rolling. Like it, These numbers are small because you're going to be doing this a lot. And then as long as you get even one cruelty from this, all of your personal concussions are going to be paused. And this is incredibly important because 
a lot of Atuma's kit is kind of maintenance. You need your hydration to go up, and you need to turn your hydration into concussions. And that is kind of always something that you need to stay on top of. You have to throw specials for hydration, heavies for concussions. Throwing the special too and getting those cruelties up to pause the concussions means that you can go ham on the opponent for a while without worrying about your ability accuracy. You can take full advantage of the fact that you have all of these cruelties. If you gained a bunch of hydration, you probably also have a precision, so you're critting more often. You have all these stacks of hydration to increase your attack rating. This is when you let loose. This is the big damage moment. And then as the cruelties are getting close to expire, then and only then do you start throwing heavies to convert the hydration into new concussions with a new duration that you will then use to fuel the next special attack and gain more hydration. It's a fairly simple loop once you get used to it, even though the math behind it is pretty wild. Now the special three, you can often skip, um, in a vanilla fight, I think you will probably more likely be focusing on the special one and the special two, and that basic loop we just outlined of picking up hydration and getting a bunch of cruelties from the special two so you can go nuts. But if you have a bunch of concussions ready, the special three is really, really good. Because not only does it scale pretty solidly with concussions and give you a lot of hydration, it also has this chance to place a really solid bleed debuff on the opponent, and once your ability accuracy is up, you can place literally dozens of bleeds. And so this can be a great way where if you have a lot of concussions, but maybe the rest of the fight is making it difficult to maintain them, you know, minute after minute, this can be a really good way to cash in on the concussions and lock them into triggering a bunch of big bleeds. And then, as this says, if the bleeds don't apply because the opponent is immune, you instead get physical vulnerability. It's not the biggest physical vulnerability, but this is going to um, scale up not only your basic attacks, but also your thorns damage. And as we'll get to in a second in the SIG ability, his thorns damage is also an offensive tool. So on that note... <laughs> The SIG ability is going to reduce the potency of incoming bleed debuffs. At SIG 200, this is 90%, same as Omega Red. If you run a point and coagulate with him, as long as you're not dealing with enhanced bleeds, that means you don't take bleed damage at all in most fights. Uh, the Thorns damage now also works when you hit your opponent. So getting your ability accuracy really high can actually cause you to, um, to deal a bunch of physical damage just hitting your opponent on top of everything else you're doing. And that Thorns damage gets better when you have bleed effects on the opponent. So if you have a high Sig Atuma and you throw the special three to lock in damage and get all those bleeds, you can then follow it up with really chunky Thorns damage while you still have some concussions. <laughs> because it's being juiced to the moon and back by all those bleeds. And then finally in the SIG, he's also going to gain energy resistance for each stack of hydration. Because uh, you usually have a concussion on him and hydration is also increasing his regen rate, this actually means that you can use him as like an Arcus or a Terex counter, or for some of those other really dangerous energy fights, just by keeping hydration up. You may give up a little bit of your offensive momentum to do so, but it actually means he's a lot more survivable than you might expect from somebody with a base 25% regen rate. I think that if you plan on using Atuma as an attacker and not just as an annoying defender in your Battlegrounds deck, you do want him awakened and at pretty high SIG because of this. So moving on to the synergies... We have this one with Namor, which I know is going to cause a lot of people to chuckle and some people to be angry. But both characters uh, lose ability accuracy, Namor just for his bleeds, and then also gain some other bonuses. Atuma gets better bleeds on his special three, and Namor gets a bit extra critical damage rating. 
The joke here, of course, is that both of these characters actually benefit from reduced ability accuracy. A Tuma will reverse it, and Namor is actually going to gain outrage more often from failing to apply the bleeds and go into his Imperious Rex mode more quickly which the team decided a few years ago was too fast of a ramp up for him on his own. I do not want to have that debate in the comic in the comments. Please don't go there. But now it's back as a synergy. So obviously quite good for both of them. So next up we have this fear itself synergy, um, which I've seen some interesting speculation about as to who the coming soon person is. I will say that for the listed synergy members, while this is a great synergy, 20% extra attack while fighting at class advantage and no attack penalty when fighting at disadvantage. This is awesome. It does only go so far for Atuma and for these four listed members because all of them have significant attack increases in their base kit. Atuma has hydration, Titania has her furies, Thing has his furies, Juggernaut has a fury, Hulk has furies, and so all of those extra sources of attack kind of dilute this bonus, which is to base attack. So this is not... I say that not to say that this isn't significant. You are going to feel this when you use it. But just don't expect this to translate to 20% extra damage. Because most of the time it will be significantly less than that. This next one, Frequent Kidnapper... Kidnapper Miles uh, with Wasp, Invisible Woman, and Phoenix. Atuma gets extra power when the opponent evades. Flat means that this is just added on, not multiplied by, and so that means that his 10% power that he gains actually becomes 25% power, meaning that four evades get him all the way up to a bar of power. Really strong. For Wasp, you are more likely to trigger her Purify for every debuff on her, Personally, I don't see myself leaning into this much, but there are certain matchups where you can get some benefit out of it. Because again, this is a flat chance, so it goes up pretty quickly, especially if you have an Awakened Wasp. For Invisible Woman, as long as you land a heavy attack, while uh, invisibility is unpaused, you can repause it. The timing of this pretty much always means you're only going to get one chance to save yourself with this because it doesn't refresh invisibility it only repauses it so if you use up half of the invisibility timer landing your heavy and then unpause it again you're probably not going to land another heavy before the duration fully runs out but it is a nice little freebie in her kit and it definitely makes her much easier to use and maintain and then for phoenix 25% chance to grant a Phoenix Force charge. This may just means that she is going to ramp faster. And Phoenix at max ramp with some of, some of her other synergies is pretty serious, so good synergy. This next one is probably the best one for Atuma. I also, of course, love the name. Um, so Atuma... There's a lot of text on this Atuma synergy. Basically what it boils down to is that you can well-timed block, you can parry to get hydration, but once you do, you then have to throw a special to get hydration that way before you can do this again. And this is basically there to prevent a horrible feedback loop. <laughs> horrible in the sense that it would break the character where you just parry to gain all kinds of hydration and basically you could just parry heavy, parry heavy, parry heavy, and never have to do anything else, and he'd go nuts. That was not the intent behind this synergy. This synergy is more intended to speed up his ramp so that you have access to hydration before you throw your first special, and therefore have access to a concussion off of the heavy before your first special. And it's very, very good at that. This is the one where... This almost feels to me like a Deadpool X-Force for Omega Red type synergy, where Atuma just gets cooking so much faster when he has this on the team. Toad's side of it, I don't think is huge for him. When I play Toad, I don't normally have that much trouble getting up to 10 poison debuffs on the opponent and turning them into a passive. Additionally, you don't always want to go for the heavy because it uses up a poison debuff. 
um, to deal a burst of damage. But if you're in a fight where you're having to bait more often, then having this ability to refresh them for the cost of one of them is pretty solid. It's kind of like putting that part of Crossbones kit into Toad. So it's just a little bit more control. And then for Man-Thing, Man-Thing is often going to be fighting an opponent with a buff on them, and therefore you're not really going to have to worry about Agitation falling off. But if he is in a slightly less than ideal matchup, then this can be quite good because it lets him keep his chance to nullify and his uh, damage higher more easily. So really good synergy for all three of them. It is honestly quite kind that this is the two star one because it's very good for all of them. And so this one ended up being even longer than the Shuri one, but I think there's a lot to talk about with Atuma. It is possible that I should have explained some of these abilities more than I did, but I really want to bring back the idea that I said earlier, which is that in practice, he plays a lot simpler than he reads. There's a lot going on in this kit, but there has also been a lot of work put into it to make sure that the end result is pretty elegant. As long as you remember that you need to throw specials to get hydration and throw heavies to turn hydration into concussions, everything else just kind of works. And like I said earlier, he becomes a freight train that you just point at your enemies. It's really hard to stop him, especially because a lot of the ways that the game uses to stop you, ability accuracy, don't work on him. He can purify stun, so you can use him on encroaching stun. He can go unstoppable. He has physical burst damage once he's awakened. He can do big yellow numbers. He has true accuracy. He can apply bleeds with his special three. He's a very flexible, powerful champion. I will say, to kind of go the other way a little bit, I don't see myself assigning him on war offense all that much. Because outside of the upcoming tactic, where, like I said, he is kind of immune to the most annoying part of glancing, so I could end up sending him. Outside of that, he doesn't have a lot of immediately needed utility for the war map. But we also went over all the things he can do, which are objectively good. And I really just think that his uh, the way he interacts with ability accuracy is so unique that he is going to age extremely well and be relevant for a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you haven't already watched the Shuri video, again, check that out. And I hope to catch you on a stream soon. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and take care.